should have never kissed you that day. Don't sweat it. Our first expression, don't sweat it. This phrase is often used to reassure someone and tell them not to worry or stress about something. It's a casual way of saying, don't let it bother you or it's not a big deal. So if you make a small mistake and your friend says, don't sweat it, they're telling you not to get overly concerned or upset about it. Remember, sometimes it's better to let go of the little things and not sweat it. I should have never kissed you that day. Don't sweat it. I should have never kissed you that day. Don't sweat it. I should have never kissed you that day. Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it, sweetie. I won't tell. Don't sweat it, sweetie. I won't tell. Don't sweat it, sweetie. I won't tell. Don't sweat it. It'll come. Merry Christmas. Same to you. Don't sweat it. It'll come. Merry Christmas. Same to you. Don't sweat it. It'll come. Merry Christmas. Same to you. Anyway, Marion started cutting corners behind my back. Now let's talk about cut corners. This phrase is often used when someone tries to find a quicker or easier way to accomplish a task without putting in the necessary effort. It's like taking shortcuts, but not necessarily in a good way. For example, if you have a project deadline approaching and you decide to skip important steps to save time, you're cutting corners. Remember, it's always better to do things properly and not cut corners. Anyway, Marion started cutting corners behind my back. Anyway, Marion started cutting corners behind my back. Anyway, Marion started cutting corners behind my back. If the deadline was tight and I had to cut corners, I had no paperwork at all. If the deadline was tight and I had to cut corners, I had no paperwork at all. If the deadline was tight and I had to cut corners, I had no paperwork at all. You don't cut corners. You do it the right way. Wow. You don't cut corners. You do it the right way. Wow. You don't cut corners. You do it the right way. Wow. My fat friend, you are hanging by a very thin thread. Moving on, we have hanging by a thread. This expression is used to describe a situation where something is in a very precarious or uncertain state. Imagine a thread holding something together, and if that thread were to break, everything would fall apart. Similarly, when something or someone is hanging by a thread, it means they are in a critical condition or facing great risk. For instance, if a company is struggling financially, and on the verge of bankruptcy. You could say that it's hanging by a thread. My fat friend, you are hanging by a very thin thread. My fat friend, you are hanging by a very thin thread. My fat friend, you are hanging by a very thin thread. My personal life is hanging by a thread, that's all. My personal life is hanging by a thread, that's all. My personal life is hanging by a thread, that's all. No. I was hanging by a thread, though. So I was hanging by a thread, though. So I was hanging by a thread. After we split up, my whole world was up in the air. Our next expression is up in the air. This phrase is used when a situation or decision is uncertain or undecided. It's like when something is floating in the air without a definite answer. For example, if you're waiting to hear back from a university about your application and they haven't given you a response, yet you could say that the decision is up in the air. It means that it's still unknown or undecided. After we split up, my whole world was up in the air. After we split up, my whole world was up in the air. After we split up, my whole world was up in the air. Man, contract with the city is up in the air. Man, contract with the city is up in the air. Man, contract with the city is up in the air. Mine are up in the air, and I can't sell. Mine are up in the air, and I can't sell. 
Mine are up in the air, and I can't sell. The ball's in your court. If you sign, I'll sign off. Finally, we have the ball is in your court. This expression is often used to shift the responsibility or decision-making power to someone else. It's like passing a ball in a game where the person who receives it is now in control. For instance, if you're working on a group project and it's your turn to contribute, and your teammate says, the ball is in your court, they're telling you that it's your responsibility now to take action or make a decision. So remember, when the ball is in your court, it's your turn to act. The ball's in your court. If you sign, I'll sign out. The ball's in your court. If you sign, I'll sign out. The ball's in your court. If you sign, I'll sign out. Well, listen, Mary Lou, it's the ball's in your court. What do you want to do? Well, listen, Mary Lou, it's the ball's in your court. What do you want to do? Well, listen, Mary Lou, it's the ball's in your court. What do you want to do? Ball's in your court now. Ball's in your court now. Ball's in your court now. And that concludes our lesson on these interesting English expressions. Thank you for watching. If the video was useful, please hit the like button.